What's up everyone? I hope you all are having a fantastic day today. I hope you're all, you know, staying healthy in spite of this whole like, you know, COVID-19 situation. So in today's video, I'm going to do the top requested video on a poll that I created in the uh, Rotor Riot uh, Facebook group um, like about three weeks ago. I've waited to do this video just kind of until I got some responses and by far the biggest response that I got was to do a Tiny Whoop JESC test. Now I know this is not a quote unquote Tiny Whoop like the ones from Jesse Perkins, but you know, it's a Tiny Whoop-esque quad. You know, it's, it's a 65 millimeter brushless quad. Here's how today's video is going to work. So I've got a little race course set up in my room. I've got three batteries for this guy. I'm going to go up with um, three batteries on the tune that's already on this quad now, which by the way, the tune on this is the Project Mockingbird version three for a brushless Whoop running 1802 size motors. It's on Betaflight 3.5. I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna fly three batteries. Of those three, of those three runs, I'm going to see uh, which run gave me the fastest consecutive uh, three laps as well as just the fastest lap just by itself. Um, I don't have any, I don't have like a, a lap timer or anything, so I'm literally just going to be going back and replaying the DVR to figure this out and just using my trusty stopwatch here to time my laps. So after I fly the first three batteries, I'm going to put um, the JESC firmware on this thing. Not gonna change anything else. I'm gonna go back up, fly again, and kinda do the same thing. Fly three batteries, get the three fastest consecutive laps, as well as the fastest lap, and then I'm gonna charge the batteries up again for a third time, and I'm gonna put the latest uh, Project Mockingbird tune on this guy with the, um, that's running Emi Flight. Basically, uh, the same tune that Joshua Bardwell put on his brushless Whoop, I think he was running a Mobula 6. Um, I'm gonna put that tune, or whatever's the latest version of that tune running Emi Flight on this guy. And then I'll do the same thing. Three fastest consecutive laps, as well as the fastest lap, and then I'm going to compare the data to see which one is faster. So now that I've gotten all of that explaining out of the way, let's go ahead and look at the course. All right, so this is the course. So we're gonna start right here, just kind of somewhere on this carpet. We're gonna go forward counterclockwise around this trophy, spiral down through this gap around this table leg, go back over the start finish line or whatever, the, the imaginary start line, do a 180 around this island, go through this little uh, trench gap right here, come up to this tripod, do another clockwise rotation around it like so. Then we're going to go up, swallow them through the gates right here. So we're gonna enter in this hole turn around, come out this way, you get the idea, keep going, keep going, and then we're gonna exit the swallow, you know, coming from this angle like that, and then from, after exiting the swallow, it's gonna be just a straight shot to this little trophy thing, and repeat. So the start, finish, time, whatever, I'll start the clock when the quad does its first clockwise rotation of this um, thing, or of this trophy, or whatever. So that's the course. I'm gonna get batteries charged, and we're gonna get started. Okay, so this is the first test of the quad. Nothing has been changed. I'm just running it stock, and by I mean stock, just the, the Project Mockingbird uh, V3 settings with my own rates and everything. Haven't added JESC or nothing. Haven't done any of that. Oh my god. 
It has been a long time that I've flown this. I'm so rusty. That's number one, let's go to battery number two. stopwatch while I'm looking at the video so just please bear with me there is probably some variance but this is what I found so of the three runs run three was the best I did a 10 lap run now I wasn't doing there wasn't 10 laps inside of two minutes that's not a test parameter it's just as many laps as I can get until I hit you know around 200 to 225 milliamp Hours because I'm using 250 milliamp hour uh, natural nectar batteries from Newbie Joint. So it's just how, how many laps can I get in before the battery is dead? Do I discharge it to a reasonable amount? So in run three, I got 10 laps. My three fastest times were 12.62 seconds, 12.68, and 13.01. And the fastest lap was. 12.62. So now I'm going to load up JESC and we'll see how that does. JESC is installed. JESC is installed. Once all the batteries are done. I'm gonna put this thing in the air and let's see how she does. And this is running the uh, JESC firmware 2.3 uh, RPM filter, 48 kilohertz, recommended for whoops. That's what it said on the thing. So that's what I stuck on here. So let's see how it does. Thank <laughs> you. 
just easier to control. That's the best way to describe it. So I'm at the two minute mark. Okay, yeah, this is more efficient. Just look at my. I mean, I'll show it in the video, but I just passed the two minute mark, and I'm only at 150 million hours. Right now, I'd be at 170 or 180, or even at 200. Oh my gosh! Why am I getting that wrong all of a sudden? All right. Wow. Okay. So there is a flight time improvement. I got like an extra minute worth of flight time out of this thing. One other thing I did notice is that, um, so right off the gate, um, before I upgraded, when I was running just regular BL Heli S stuff, um, on these 250 milliamp hour packs, this quad is really finicky on the sticks because it has just so much power. But after like you run it, you run it for about 30 seconds or a minute, the voltage comes down and it becomes a lot easier to manage. With the new JESC firmware, it just felt smoother throughout the entire flight. It didn't start like jumpy and then get smoother. Like it started smooth and it just stayed smooth consistently throughout that whole entire flight. So. I'm pretty impressed. I'm I'm very impressed. Um, and also, of course, the extra longer flight time. I'm not sure if I got more laps that round because of all the bounces and stuff that I did, but holy cow, it, it handles pretty dang good. I like it. So my fastest run on Betaflight 3.5 before I upgraded JESC was a 10 lap run with the top three times of 12.62, 12.68, and 13.01. The fastest lap being 12.62. Now on J, now that was run three. For JESC, my fastest run was run two with 12 laps. Three fastest times are 12.08. 12.09 and 12.12 .12. and the fastest time of those three was 12.08 so they're about like two-thirds of a second to a second quicker and as far as comparing the two the fastest laps yeah it's about two-thirds faster so now i'm going to put project mockingbird on the quad and see how that handles all right so i've got projects i mean i'm sorry Project Okay, so I've got Emu Flight on this quad. It is the latest. It's a technically it's a beta release. Uh, Project Mockingbird tune for the Mobula Six. Uh, you can find it on the Project Mockingbird's uh, Facebook group. I will leave a link to said page down in the video description below. There is a diff file 
that takes you to a OneDrive. You just double click that. It takes you to basically a CLI dump. You just copy that, paste it into the CLI after you've upgraded to uh, EMI Flight and press enter. The version of EMI Flight that is on this quad right here is uh, version 2.0 release candidate one. This firmware was released for, I think it was 2. Point like 0 0.2, 0 0.15 or something like that, that's no longer available. So I just went with the latest release and then um, I had to adjust some stuff in the configurator to make sure that all of my uh, switches were mapped correctly. So that's all done. And anyway, so let's uh, put this thing up in the air for the third and final test. No, let's just go for a quick little test hover. Make sure it's not gonna freak out. Because I am running D-Shot 600 at AKAK -AK on this little sucker. So, uh, it's, uh... Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. The CPU load is at, like, 30-something percent. Alright, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Alright, let's go! Let's do this!
the how the um, project Mockingbird Emu Flight Team stacks up with everything else that I've tried today. All right, so the results from the Emu Flight Project Mockingbird tune with JESC are in, and of the three runs, my fastest was run number three. I only got 10 laps before the battery died, but my three fastest times of the 10 laps was a 10.95, an 11.73, and an 11.78. So, yeah, so my times basically improved by almost two seconds from when I originally started. So, um, yeah, that's a pretty big improvement. So let's talk uh, final thoughts. Well, I can put my hand over my heart and say that I like the Emu Flight Tune much, much better than the Beta Flight Tune. The Beta Flight Tune was really, really twitchy and felt kind of kind of loose a little bit, but this new Emu Flight Tune, it feels really organic to fly. Like, it, you, like you, just, you just think what you want to do, and the drone does it. Like, hitting this little, um, this corkscrew around, where basically, basically it's a, J, a small J ladder around my um, table, and then going through just really the whole course, um, yeah, I just felt like I was able to just kind of, just kind of flow and kind of chain my lines together much, much easier than with the Beta Flight Tune. With the Beta Flight Tune, it kind of felt like, hold on, I felt like I was kind of like doing this. I got like, go forward, turn around, go forward, turn around. Like, it, it kind of felt like I was just, it was just kind of just darting all over the place. With the Emu Flight Tune, it felt like it, it was, I was just able just to kind of just, flow and car around um, corners much, much easier. And that made a huge difference in flight time. And so, okay, so what are the downsides? Well, one downside I noticed when I switched over to the Emi flight tune was flight times. I was still on JESC, but I noticed that I had, like, had about a 10 to 20 second reduction in flight time and it kind of varied between those two. That's not a lot. I mean, it's it's about 10 seconds, 10 or 15 seconds more than what I was getting on the beta flight tune without running JESC, but it was less than, um, but it was less than like the beta flight with just JESC. So, um, what else? There was one other downside. Oh yeah, um, it kind of felt like towards the end of my batteries, the flight performance kind of like, pfft, kind of fell off of a cliff. Um, and I think I was just due to the battery getting weaker. On JESC and the beta flight tune that I had on this thing previously, um, the quad felt the same kind of throughout the whole run. Whereas, um, let me just, just pull up times here. Okay, yeah, they're not that different, I guess. But yeah, just that, that last run, I had like three really bad laps and it just felt like it went kind of wonky. It actually, at one point the quad, one of the motors kind of dipped out. I'm not really sure what that's about. It might be due to the fact that I'm running this on D-Shot 600 and 8K PID loop and 8K uh, gyro update frequency. Whereas I was running D-Shot 300 and 4K 4K on the beta flight. So that might be a reason why I might switch I might take the D-Shot 300 down or, um, or play around with the, with the PID loop and gyro frequency. Um, but I think the reduction in flight time and the kind of the performance maybe not being as good at the end of the pack is a small price to pay. Um, I think going forward, I'm definitely gonna keep this Emu flight tune. I'm gonna try and tweak it a little bit. Um, I'll tell you what, if you want this tune that I used for this quad, I will leave my CLI dump down in the video description so you can just copy that and paste it into, um, uh, what is it, um, your own quad. Uh, it's basically the exact same as uh, the Project Mockingbird tune, just with like, I load, my, I lo I load the yaw rate from like 2.1 
to like just two. And then I played around with some OSU settings. I'm not, I didn't use the like the FPV angle mix thing. I didn't use that. That's kind of enabled by default, but you have to set up a little, um, you have to set it up on a switch on your controller. I didn't do that. I probably have to go back in and disable that function because I don't feel that I need it. But uh, that's gonna be it for this review. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, if you like this video, um, then leave a like and a comment. And if you would like to support me, my Patreon link is down in the video description below. So thank you very much for your time and y'all have a good one. Bye.